how are you getting on with using your X-T2 as a video camera? Of course, the X-T2 is becoming a real player, but there's something that could just step you up from beginner to not quite beginner. You don't get the rail rod face plate, as they put it. You don't get the cage handle. That's a separate item. You can buy this with that, and you can just use any handle, any rail rod base plate, etc., that you want. So this is just to get us started. It'll screw, cold shoe mount there with a screw thread. It's all about that quarter inch screw thread. If you've got a bunch of these lying around, don't get rid of them. They could be your best friend when it comes to using anything like this or anything that you're gonna be attaching to this. You've got a tool right there for screwing things in and out. A bit of silica gel. And then the unit itself, very well built, solid metal. The price is 65, cheaper than the small rig version, but not by a huge amount. I imagine that's because it's not exactly cheap to machine these things and put them out onto Amazon in the right quantity for a company to be making profit. But to all intents and purposes, it's a solid unit. You don't want to be fitting your camera to something that's just going to fall apart as you're using it. This feels right and you can adjust and tighten as you please. If you've never used one of these before, you can just attach anything to those quarter inch screw thread holes anywhere that you want. Just screw it in and it's in place, it's going nowhere. And of course, anything that you would normally fit to a cold shoe mount, you can do right there. Now, of course, the simplest thing is your flashlight or your mic that can go straight on there. Extremely easy to personalize your own setup. There is a version of this for those of you that use the battery grip. Let's get rid of this. There we go. You can tell that was on nice and solid. Then what you'll probably do first when you get it is you'll try to line things up and you'll think, all right, that's in, but what's going on down here? So again, we get the tool, you just tighten it. Don't go too wild, it's not necessary, and it's in. There's a few things that make this an excellent starting point if you're getting serious about rigging up your camera for shooting videos. Firstly, you notice we've gone back to having a bit of a grip again, so I'm happy with that, that's nice. But also, you'll notice that at least in the current configuration, I can shoot like that. I can have a bit more grip handheld there. That's if I don't decide to add anything on there. All the edges are nice and clean, protected. You can take this plate off and add your own base plate, which is something I'd probably consider if I wanted to quickly throw on a tripod or a monopod especially. But can we access everything we need to access? Couple of awkward bits. These dials aren't as accessible as you might need them, but you know, you can still turn the top there. But if for some reason you need to change your metering modes quickly, for me, not a problem. It's actually impossible to get in to that. And also on this side, we can still mess with the dial there if need be, but switching from stills to video is impossible. Well, comfortably, you could stick something in there, I suppose. But as we're using this for video, that's not a huge deal. Neither of these problems are game changers for me. Flicking over to the other side, can we access the ports? Not a problem at all. And there's actually space for things to come across. You can get some cable management going on in there as well. Maybe you've got some clip systems or something, or even technically some of the cables might even run through that. Right, so that's fine. Now another small issue, getting the screen out. You might have to devise something there. You can get it just not if you're in a panic, in a rush. And you've got your full up, no problem at all, which is probably my favorite. And for shooting down, you're limited. You can't push it down, as you can imagine there. If you're always using that configuration, if you do it like that, you can get it. But yeah, 
limited there. And of course we've got one more function to the screen, which you can get to with a little bit of a, a flick in the middle there. But yeah, that's not ideal. Again, I'm just showing you the negatives to see if you can get around that. Flicking over to this side, nothing's blocked at all there. On the bottom, you can get to your battery with no problem at all. This plate can come off, you can replace it with your own plate. As you can see, just a couple of things that might be a bit awkward for you. These things not affecting me when it comes to shooting video. We removed the included base plate and added an Arca Swiss style base plate there so we can have a little play with configuring this. Of course, you can use a cold shoe mount and attach stuff like a shotgun mic right there. You do have access to your usual hot shoe, cold shoe, mount but you'll lose access to the quarter inch screw threads on the top of the cage there you've still got a couple on the front there so that's up to you this is all really personal choice I could also mount an LED panel on the top right there and if I loosen this mount adapter a little bit I can actually angle the light where I want of course the unit itself has an up and down right there but let's just say for for example that's fine where it is what happens if I want to use my screen those two back to back there they're not drastically bad especially as I'd probably want to be viewing it from this side you know that's not too bad as it is but it's not necessarily an ideal solution with that in place let's just see how we get on fitting this mic there we go. Now you might want to just get some clips or something to keep your cables tidy. Of course you might not need the hood. So let's just take that off so you can see a nice low profile. And still plenty of space for attaching anything else that you might want to attach. For example, an external recorder like a Zoom H2N, something like that. You can easily just use that handheld and then you're away. In fact, it's looking awkward, but it, it's nice and balanced mainly thanks to that grip and the cage on this side if you're thinking of rigging up your camera this is definitely a good choice and really competes well against the small rig options and other cages that aren't specifically designed but it's a personal thing so see how you get on and let us know in the comments below maybe you can recommend something else and in fact if there are any accessories that you recommend such as the handles and anything else that we haven't touched on because this is you know just a quick overview of especially for beginners to use in a rig. Let us know in the comments below and hopefully we can get deeper in a future video. Make sure to subscribe, hit the notification thing and I'll see you in the next episode.